Mushrooms, fungi, and toadstools all have one thing in common. They are all super weird and super awesome with a lot of surprising uses. Over the years, there have been a lot of Pokemon inspired by the funky fungi that cover our land, and today I want to discuss all of the different mushroom-inspired species. Hey there trainers, Ranger Rye here. It has been a hot summer this year. I hope you guys have been keeping cool. Me, I've been staying hydrated with some pretty fun guys, and I've been studying a lot of different fungi. Today, I wanted to discuss all of the amazing mushroom-inspired Pokemon and break down their influences. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe and like this video if you want to learn more about Pokemon Origins, and leave a comment on which mushroom Pokemon you think is the coolest. Now before we just jump into talking about the various species of mushrooms, I wanted to explain how we will be organizing the Pokemon on this list today. We have three main categories of mushrooms that should make this a lot easier to understand. Those categories are edible mushrooms, poisonous mushrooms, and mushroom adjacent. Edible mushrooms are the Pokemon that are based off of mushrooms that can be eaten when prepared properly. Poisonous mushrooms are clearly the opposite, as not only do we not want to ingest or eat these mushrooms, but touching them could also have some pretty bad side effects as well. And mushroom adjacent are the creatures that have mushroom-like qualities, but aren't exactly mushrooms. Now there might be some overlap in these sections, so we'll break them down as best we can when we get there. We're going to start in the middle of this section and discuss one of the most poisonous mushroom Pokemon out there with the Among Us line. This Pokemon line is based on the Amanita Muscaria, also known as the Fly Agaric. If you have ever seen a drawing of a mushroom in your life, then you have probably seen this pattern before. But it's important to note that this species might look alluring and even pretty, but it's actually a toxic toadstool. However, I am happy to report that this species isn't as dangerous as you might think. Its bright colors and prominent shape can make it alluring, but with a little washing and boiling, its toxins can be diluted pretty easily. Not only that, but any major illnesses or deaths from this fungi are pretty rare, so the danger from this species is a bit oversold. You might have noticed that this mushroom also bears a pretty strong resemblance to the iconic power-up mushroom from a famous game series involving a plumber who jumps really high, and even plenty of other famous mushrooms, and that is no difference for Fungus and Amungus. This Pokemon not only resembles the Amanita Muscaria, its cap and arms have a Pokeball pattern on it, meaning that they have adapted to be alluring to its prey or other creatures that feed on them. It's probably because we as humans are attracted to brightly colored and familiar shaped things. However, if you remember in the Krogunk video, we discussed that brightly colored things in nature can usually indicate something is dangerous, poisonous, or venomous. Recently, a lot of us have been taking trips to the Paldea region, where we discovered the unusual paradox phenomenon, and how some Pokémon seem to come from a past or future-like location. Now, while I'm no scientist, I do believe it's worth discussing the interesting topic of the past paradox Pokémon known as Brute Bonnet. This paradox Pokémon is said to be a past and more beastly version of Among Us, with these long green strands on its cap where it gets the name Bonnet. These long green strands are most likely based on, and I hope I can pronounce this right, Syzygites megalocarpus, which is a parasitic mold that affects mushrooms. This might be why Brute Bonnet is much more aggressive than its modern counterpart. The ancient mushroom seems to be affected by this potentially aggressive parasite, causing itself to become more aggressive and even losing its poison typing and becoming a bit more physical and beastly. The actual mold that affects mushrooms can produce a yellowish discolor, which might explain the yellow eyes that Brute Bonnet gets. It's a bit unfortunate that this ancient paradox Pokemon gets that kind of treatment, but if we were to take the whole species and categorize them, Fungus, Amungus, and Brute Bonnet are all clearly poisonous. Moving from the poisonous, let's discuss something a bit more edible and not super creepy at all. The Paris line. But wait, Rai, did you just call the Pokemon named after a parasite edible? Why yes, yes I did. Because despite what everyone on the internet wants you to believe, the mushrooms on Paris and Parasect are indeed edible. 
The term parasite has a bit of a negative reputation, usually describing a small organism that feeds off of its host, and typically it causes harm to that host. A lot of the time, a smaller organism will attach to a larger creature and will feed off of its nutrients. However, there is actually room to argue that Paris and the mushrooms on its back have something closer to a symbiotic relationship. This can be left up to interpretation, but the idea of a fully sentient Pokemon being taken over by this mushroom while still keeping its sentience and memories is a bit much for me, but it's easier to consider that the mushroom on its back, known as a Tochkaso, are more or less combining with Paris when evolving to increase the Pokemon's longevity. We do actually know that Paris can have these mushrooms removed and be absolutely fine, as we've actually seen it happen before. And if you've ever walked around in most of the games, you can actually pick up big and small mushrooms. Speaking of these mushrooms, have you ever noticed that not only can you pick them up, but you can sell them, and some collectors will actually pay quite the pretty penny for them? That's actually because Tochkaso can be used for medicinal purposes, as well as the spores from Parasect are highly prized for the medicinal uses as well. Even with the parasitic nature of this mushroom, it only seems to thrive in incredibly specific conditions, otherwise being very helpful to many different people and Pokemon medicinally, which is why I can label it as edible. However, I think it's time we discuss one of the most dangerous mushroom-based Pokemons out there. But before that, let me just remind you all to share and comment on this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And thank you all for helping us finally reach over 700 subscribers. I love making these videos, and every like, follow, and share helps us so much. While the poisons and origins of our previous Pokemon were pretty straightforward, this one takes a little more understanding of folklore and the supernatural. In many Western European legends, mushrooms that grow in these circle-like patches were known as special areas called fairy rings. According to most legends, it's said that fairy rings are made by fairies that dance around in these mushroom circles. That's pretty cute, right? Well, apparently it's not very cute according to the legends. Fairy rings have been known as a sign of danger, mostly to people who are very superstitious. It's said that by stepping inside of the circle, someone would be transported to the fairy realm and to their doom. Despite what most media would have you think, fairies were considered dangerous and tricky creatures. Taking a look over at the more scientific side of things, the bioluminescent mushrooms that this Pokemon is based off of are known for two things. The first is their unique ability to glow and the second is their next to uselessness in cooking. You could try to cook some of these mushrooms, but their size is so small that it would take quite a lot of them just to make a small snack. On top of that, only some are edible, while a good amount of them are toxic, so trying to eat them wouldn't really be worth the effort. Moral and Shinotic are one of the most dangerous mushroom Pokemon, not for their relation to mushrooms, rather for their connection to the supernatural. While this mushroom is tied to the fairy lore, as well as having the fairy typing, a lot of people don't seem to understand the concept of the lore of the Will-o'-the-Wisps and how it's related to this Pokemon. The Will-o'-the-Wisps are small flickering flames that lead travelers astray to potentially send them to their doom or to something much worse. It's actually been shown that Shinotic does this, guiding people and Pokemon away so that way they can absorb their life forces. Unlike the other mushroom Pokemon, this one is willing to snack on anything it can trap in its territory. Which is why I'm going to categorize these guys under bad for your health. Moving on from something that's super dark, let's talk about something that's super odd but also pretty cool. Shroomish would honestly be the perfect mushroom Pokemon until you remember that this guy evolves into this guy. Breloom is one of the biggest outliers in the mushroom Pokemon kingdom, as it doesn't resemble a specific fungus, rather a sort of dinosaur wearing mushroom clothing? It's not too hard to see that this is a very different approach to a mushroom line of Pokemon, but the design makes a lot of sense when you see this, known as a Gestralis or Earth Star. There isn't a whole lot to say about the mushroom itself, but it is clear that it resembles Shroomish pretty clearly. But this doesn't exactly explain why it evolves into Breloom until you consider that an Earth Star 
looks a bit like a dinosaur egg. That's right, this Pokemon line has taken the most liberty with its design by mixing a mushroom that looks a lot like an egg and dinosaurs. Breloom is the result of someone asking the question of, if this mushroom was an egg, what would come out of it? While I can't say there's a whole lot of mushroom influence, the type of caps they wear are basically a mushroom cap. However, they are also inspired by the traditional designs of monks, samurai, and soldiers, which is probably where they get the fighting typing. So basically, Breloom is a fighting dinosaur mushroom that hatched from a mushroom egg, which safely puts it in the mushroom adjacent spot. And now we reach the final line of this video, and boy is it a doozy. If you're liking these videos, please let me know in the comments, I want to hear from you guys. I'm actually super excited to talk about this line, not only because it introduced a new way Pokemon might evolve, but it- <laughs> oh, oh dear Arceus. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just- Look at those feet! Toad's Cool and Toad's Cruel were completely unexpected when Scarlet and Violet released, and I just love them! The inspiration for this line comes from the Wood Ear, a very specific looking mushroom that I hear is pretty delicious. Right, however this choice in design makes a lot more sense when you know about the mushroom's other name, the Tree Jellyfish. While I don't really think it looks like a jellyfish, it does have a transparent design and roundness that could give off that impression. This Pokemon is also a prime example of the real-world phenomenon known as Parallel Evolution. While people might be ready to write them off as regional forms, the main fact is that these two species are both completely different and the same. Parallel evolution is when two seemingly different species with a similar ancestor evolve over time and arrive at a similar evolutionary state. So let's just say that both Toadskool and Tentacool both had a similar gelatinous ancestor, but some of them lived in the water while others got their liquids from trees. Over centuries of evolution, they both had similar building blocks in their DNA to turn out to their current selves but their environments, diets, and predators cause them to adapt differently. So while these are two different species, Toad's Cool and Toad's Cruel are very funny and very cool cousins to the very well-known and very dangerous Tentacool and Tentacruel lines. However, it should be noted that they can indeed be considered edible, but you need to catch them first. Of course, that's just another example of the close connections between the Pokemon world and the real world. Thanks for sticking around, trainers. I hope you had a fun time with these fun guys. And tell me in the comments below what Pokemon I should talk about next. Also, which mushroom do you think should get a Pokemon next? I hope to see you all next time. And as always, keep exploring, trainers.